Sabbath. We're so glad that you're here to join us again this week. Can you believe it's almost time for school time to be out? That's pretty exciting, isn't it? Summer is such a fun time. I know Jillian likes to swim. Do any of you like to swim? Well, we're so glad that you're here today. Let's get started and sing some praises to God. All right, we're gonna sing, He Has Made Me Glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Making melodies. Thumbs up, 
arms up, pinkies out, pinkies out, elbows up, elbows up, chin up, chin up. Make a melody's in my heart. Pinkies out, pinkies out, elbows up, elbows up, chin up, chin up, tongue out. Make a melody in my heart. Make a melody in my heart. Make a melody in my heart. To the king of kings. Thumbs up, thumbs up, pinkies out, pinkies out, elbows up, elbows up, chin up, chin up, tongue out, tongue out. Stand up and turn around and sit down. <laughs> Good morning, boys and girls, and happy Sabbath. I am so excited to be here with you for another Nature Nugget. And this week's Nature Nugget animal, I am super excited to share with you. And it is an animal that I didn't know much about or I had ever seen. So let's see if you guys figured out this week's Nature Nugget animal clues. So clue number one was they don't have incisor teeth. Instead, they have fangs. And clue number two, one of their defense mechanisms is that they can swim in water, even though you wouldn't think that. All right, let's think about it. What animal did God create? That's right. This week's Nature Nugget Animal is all about the mouse deer. So let's jump in and learn about this fun animal. So the mouse deer is of about 10 species of small, delicately built, hoofed mammals. You can find them in warmer parts of Southeast Asia and in India and in some parts of Africa. Mouse deers are shy, solitary, evening and night active vegetarians. They only stand about 12 inches tall at their shoulder and characteristically walk on the hoof tips of their slender legs. The fur is usually reddish brown with spots and stripes of a paler color or white. The underside is pale. The males have a small curved tusk protruding downward out of the mouth from the upper jaw. Mouse deers are shy and mysterious, and not much is really known about them. They really are odd-looking creatures. They tend to have round bodies, spindly legs, and long fangs, and they definitely get the platypus a run for its money. But mouse deer are neither a mice nor are they considered a deer. At first glance, these animals look like a weird mashup of a deer, a mouse, and a pig. But mouse deer share a suborder with a deer, but are not considered true deer. They have their own family. These creatures are, very, are way smaller than any deer. Depending on the species, a mouse deer can weigh anywhere from 4 to 33 pounds. The smallest species is the lesser malaya, which, is, which the largest is the water mouse deer. No species gets any long, larger than a dog. The tiny animal comes in many vari variations. The family has been classified into two uh, genres, true mouse deer and the mouse deer. The spotted mouse deer are still very mysterious, so scientists have placed them in their own genus called Muscholias. Despite being categorized in different genres, they all share a similar look. Open up a mouse deer's mouth and you'll find two long fangs. They're especially elongated in males, which use the needle-like canines to hurt one another. Thanks to an extra thick coat and robust muscles around the neck and their rump, these adorable fighters are protected from bites during combat. Mouse deers are the most primitive of ruminants. Like deer and similar hoofed animals, they have even-toed hooves and a multi-chambered stomach. But unlike deer, mouse deer have a three-chambered stomach instead of a four, and they lack horns or antlers. The water mouse deer is known for its ability to dive underwater when it senses a predator nearby. The miniature swimmers scrunch up and walk on the bottom of rivers and streams to prevent being picked up by the current. If there are any reeds or plants around, the animals will grab them to stay tethered. 
mouse deers are able to hold their breath for about four minutes. While hiding from hungry predators, the water mouse deer can reemerge to get some air before diving back down. Still, the animal does tire easily and they can only swim for short periods of time. After getting pregnant, a female mouse deer will carry the offspring for five to nine months, depending on the species. The baby can usually stand on its own within an hour of being born. Mothers will visit their young periodically for feeding and stand on three legs while nursing. The mouse steers are also known for their ability to be almost continuously pregnant. Greater and lesser uh, Malay mouse deer can mate again only a few hours after giving birth. Due to their small size, mouse deer are preyed upon by many different animals. Lacking antlers or horns for protection, the tiny animals are forced to lead secluded lives. Some species are nocturnal and very rarely seen. Mouse deers are very shy and often graze alone, only coming together to mate. They communicate with a series of smells and noises, and this timid behavior makes a difficult it difficult for scientists to study them. Although normally peaceful, a male mouse deer will angrily beat his hooves when he is agitated. They can stomp around four to seven times a second. This drum roll technique wards off predators and warns other mouse deers in the area that there is danger. Well, boys and girls, that wraps up another Nature Nugget. And remember, like the beautiful book Steps to Christ tells us, we can learn more about Jesus when we look in nature. The green fields, the trees, the passing clouds, all of it speaks to our heart and invites us to become acquainted with Jesus who made them all, including the very adorable mouse deer. Hey, here are your clues for next week's nature nugget animal. Clue number one. They are the only mammal that has a bill. And clue number two, their cheeks hold food for them while they dive underwater. All right, boys and girls, good luck. And I can't wait to join you again next week for another Nature Nugget. Bye. Ten-year-old Joe watched movies and played video games with friends at his home in the Solomon Islands, but he wasn't happy. Joe's family lived in a poor neighborhood in the South Pacific country's capital, Honiara. Neighbors sold illegal drugs, and children stole and got into trouble with the police. Joe's house was a popular place for neighborhood boys to hang out every evening. He noticed that one of his friends didn't talk like the other boys and participated in something called a Pathfinder Club every Sabbath. Joe decided to join his friend at the Seventh-day Adventist Church to learn more. Soon, he joined the Pathfinders as well and went to church every Sabbath. After a while, Joe and the other Pathfinders were invited to fly to Australia to attend a camporee for Pathfinders from all over the South Pacific Division. He really wanted to go, so Mom worked hard to save money for his plane ticket. When Mom was finally able to buy his ticket, Joe flew to the camporee and enjoyed every second of it. When Joe returned home and the neighborhood boys came over that evening, he told stories from the camporee. The boys loved the stories, so they asked to hear more the next evening. Then Joe thought to himself, My friends like to hear about Pathfinders. Why not tell them about Jesus, too? So each evening when his friends came over, Joe kept telling them stories from the Pathfinder Camporee, but also began to share stories from the Bible. Joe's friends enjoyed his stories so much that they invited other boys from the neighborhood to come hear them too. Soon, 30 to 40 boys came to Joe's house every evening to learn more about Jesus. Although mom didn't have much money, she began to cook food for the children to eat after story time. She somehow always had enough food for everyone. Joe's new friends began to ask him if they could join Pathfinders, and four joined him at church the next Sabbath. More of his friends came to church the following week. The Pathfinder leader couldn't understand where all these children were coming from. Joe, why are so many kids from your neighborhood coming to Pathfinder Club? He asked. What did you do? I didn't do anything, Joe replied. I just tell them stories about what we did in Australia, and we have evening devotions, that's all. 
The leader asked to visit Joe's home to see the evening get-togethers for himself. When he came that evening, he was amazed at what he saw. Afterward, he said to mom, this neighborhood would be a good place to open a church. He noticed that Joe's house had a large unfinished living room that no one used and asked if it could be used for Sabbath worship. Mom agreed. Several dozen neighborhood children came to Joe's house for church the next Sabbath. All the Pathfinder leaders and their families came as well, and they brought food for everyone. Then something happened that made Joe very happy. Mom decided to be baptized. Not long after, his 20-year-old cousin was baptized too, and so were three of his neighborhood friends whom Joe had introduced to Pathfinders. Today, Joe's living room is packed every Sabbath with about 70 people, and plans are underway to open a permanent church in the neighborhood. Now, Joe is 13 years old. He's humble in appearance and speech, but no one doubts that God is using him in a powerful way. I may be small, but in God's hand, I can grow a church. Like Joe, you too can help grow God's church as you share Jesus with your friends and family. What can you see? Um, I can see everything. Wow. happy sabbath so today you're going to join me for breakfast so i have two options i have honey nut o's or rice krispies or crispy rice so i think i'm probably going to go with honey nut o's because just because they're my favorite and i mean it sounds like cereal so i'm gonna have it so this isn't cereal this is silverware it makes me really disappointed. I really wanted cereal. Okay, so we'll try crispy rice now. I mean, it says toasted rice cereal, so it says it's cereal, and it sounds like cereal, so we'll try it. It is cereal. So, I mean, this reminds me that sometimes things aren't always as they appear to be. And we can't be sure that what our eyes see and hear is what's actually happening. There's one thing that we can always be sure of, and that's God's love for you and me. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 11, 1, that faith is to be sure of the things that we have not seen. God is as sure as the box of cereal that does have cereal in it. And when you have faith in God, you can trust in Him and believe that He will always be there to take care of you. Happy birthday!
Hello boys and girls, this is Aunt Fernita, and I have a wonderful story for you called The King's Dream. Today's memory verse is from Acts chapter 20 verse 24. It says, I want to tell people the good news about God's grace. The message for today's story is we worship God when we tell others about Him. Have you ever had a dream? Was it fun remembering it when you woke up? A long time ago, a king had a very strange dream. Oh! King Nebuchadnezzar groaned and rolled over in his bed. He opened his eyes and looked around. It was still very dark. The king thought about the strange dream he had just had. He tried to go back to sleep, but it was no use. Bring the wise men, he called to his guards. Quickly, the guards woke up some of the wise men and rushed them to the king. King Nebuchadnezzar frowned at the men. I had a dream that troubles me, he said. O oh, king, live forever, replied the men. Please tell us your dream, then we will tell you what it means. No, King Nebuchadnezzar shouted. You must tell me the dream, and then you must tell me what it means. The wise men looked at each other. They did not smile. No one can do what the king asks, they whispered. King Nebuchadnezzar became very angry. Take them away. Take all the wise men away, he ordered. Daniel, one of the wise men, had not been awakened. He only learned of the trouble when the guards came to take him away with the other wise men. What is troubling the king, Daniel asked. The guard explained, the king has had a troubling dream, and the wise men couldn't tell him what it was. Please, Daniel said, let me talk to the king. Daniel bowed before the king. Please give me some time. I want to pray to my God and ask him to tell me your dream and what it means, he asked politely. King Nebuchadnezzar frowned, but he agreed. Daniel hurried to his three best friends. Together they prayed that God would show Daniel this secret. That night, God did tell Daniel the king's dream. In the morning, Daniel went back to King Nebuchadnezzar. Can you tell me what I dreamed and what it means? The king demanded. No, Daniel answered. I can't. But there is a God in heaven who explains secret things. And Daniel told the king exactly what he had dreamed and what it meant. That's my dream! King Nebuchadnezzar shouted. Now I know that your God is the greatest of all, he exclaimed. Nebuchadnezzar made Daniel a ruler in the kingdom, and he put Daniel in charge of the other wise men. Daniel was happy to help. He was happy about helping the other wise men out of trouble. But Daniel was happiest because the king now knew that the God of heaven is the only true God. This podcast was brought to you by gracelink.net and Studio El Piso. For more children's resources, please visit gracelink.net. Thank you so much for joining us again this week. Did you enjoy learning about Daniel and how God showed him what the king dreamed? Not just what the dream meant, but actually what the dream was. God is amazing and he can do amazing things for us too. Sometimes it's hard to trust that, but we can. The Bible tells us that God is trustworthy, he is faithful, and he is good, and he is love. So thank you for joining us and let's pray together. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for the songs we could sing together. Thank you for the nature nugget we could learn. Thanks for all the um, talents that you have given to the kids. Uh, thank you, God, that we can be together in this way, that you love us. You're so good for us, You're good to us. Thank you so much for Sabbath, and thank you for our families. Thank you for the beautiful springtime flowers outside, and that it's almost summer. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Have a good week. Happy Sabbath.